Hello, ladies and gentlemen, it is your host with the most, Avery LR32 here, and destroy the ever-living stun boo-boo stain off of that like and subscribe button so we can climb even higher the 1200 ladder. I've been meaning to cover this for the past couple days. I've just been really busy play testing, getting ready for the regional season here. Uh, Sprite purely is going to be what gets us our invite. I'm calling it now. I'm hoping at least. Um, but... I wanted to talk about this stun deck that topped an OTS championship, I think it was in Brazil, and uh, the guy actually mentioned what he played against. It was five rounds. He ended up beating everything except for the last round where he lost to Cash Tier, and then he lost in the top to Branded uh, from what Facebook was able to translate his comment into, because it was Spanish and I can't speak Spanish. Um, basically, like he didn't side deck properly. Uh, had he played a punishment better, had timed it better, then uh, he could have maybe extended the game a little bit longer. But uh, he beat his son, Avalon Rika. He beat Tier Element. Uh, I think he even said he beat uh, a branded deck at some point. Like, he played against all meta all day, and the only thing that he lost to was Cash Tier out of five rounds, which is really impressive for a stun deck like this. So <laughs> for those of you who haven't been keeping up with, like, the, I guess, adventures of being a stun player, <laughs> uh, essentially... They've been moving away from using things like Inspector Border, and they've been more leaning into things like either like a Grand Maju engine, like when Desires was at three, some people would use like Inspector Border with other stun cards like Fossil Dine, and then have like Grand Maju be your big main deck boss monster beat stick because you could just banish cards with Desires, have a 4,000 attack beater. Now with the release of Time Tearing Morganite, of course being a busted ass card, I don't care what anyone says, I understand it doesn't do anything for you first turn, but once you start drawing those two cards every turn, oh, Lord have mercy, it is so good. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, like, uh, this this deck, uh, they're, they're, like, what what is there really to explain here? Like, you're using a Fallen of Albaz package with Decisive Battle of Golgonga, and the only thing that you need to know about this card, the, the Grand Sea Golgonga crap, like, does not matter. Just once a turn, if a card or cards you control would be destroyed by battle by card effect, then you can dump a fusion monster that mentions Albaz as a material from your extra deck to the graveyard instead. You don't get the special summon of the Spriggans monster because you're obviously not playing Spriggans. Um, so like you can dump Albion, you can dump the Bastard Dragon, you can also dump uh, the Sanctifier Dragon, which then would allow you to, uh, also if you dump it with uh, Punishment, then you could use the Sanctifier's effect to tribute two monsters in the extra monster zones and then two in the central main monster zones to summon it. Obviously, that doesn't come up very often, but the fact that you would have access to that dumping it into the grave off of either the Decisive Battle or off of the um, Dogmatica Punishment, that is something interesting to keep in mind. So let's just go ahead and, and go on into this top four stun degenerate shit profile. <laughs> <laughs> All jokes aside, it just uh, stun is just hilarious. Like my dad plays stuff like this, but then he'll play stuff like Mirror Force, and I'm just like, Dad, battle traps haven't been a thing since I played Trick Star in like 2017. So we're playing one copy of Albaz, one copy of Ecclesia. You want a small monster count and stun. Like you don't have a lot of targets, so th this is fine. Uh, three copies of Dino, one copy of Jalgen. Uh, you ditch a random card from your hand to the grave, and then you destroy all special summon monsters on the field, and neither player can special summon monsters. You don't care that this conflicts. You're a stun deck. Uh, three copies of Nadir Servant, just the one of copy of Lightning Storm. Only two top, two copies? Two copies of Time Tearing Morganite. I mean, you want to keep this deck down to 40. So I guess like drawing three can be kind of dead. So, I mean, there's that. Two copies of Talents and then the one Thrust because you play almost nothing but normal spells and traps. Three copies of Brain Infusion with the three copies of Prosperity. You're playing a lot of multiples along with the Punishment. So you're definitely digging through your extra deck here between like your Brain Infusion targets and your Prosperity and Punishments. Um, so do keep that in mind. Uh, then the two copies of the Decisive Battle of the Gogangna. And then three copies of Evenly Matched, three copies of Punishment, two copies of D Barrier because you're playing the Thrust, uh, three Compulse, three TC Boo, and three Crackdown. Um, yeah, back, back to the point I was saying about Mirror Force. My dad's like, oh yeah, set up a Moon Mirror Shield and Mirror Forces and everything. And I'm just like, no, like Battle Traps aren't a thing anymore in Stun. Like, the thing is, if you look at like past Stun lists that we've covered on the channel, which has been sort of like, a, I guess, a side hobby of mine here on the channel, covering like little rogue decks and stun decks and things like that. It's interesting to see the evolution of like where people have played like the different kinds of mirror forces and moon mirror shield and stuff in the past. And that's not to say that you can't build stun like that, but I feel like in 2023, you have to be kind of more proactive 
than like hoping that you don't draw like dead cards like armor recall to get you to the moon mirror shield because like if you can't set up like a border and a dyna or like a border with a dragoons and backed up like by a moon mirror shield you're really losing the ball game and you need as much consistency as you can so having this branded engine just offers a lot of consistency um it's actually like really impressive moving on to the extra we're playing one cyber dragon nova one golden cloud beast malong so uh, it's just a tuner non-tune you're obviously never going to make this uh the only thing you need to know about it is that uh if it's sent to the grave so, i.e., uh, Dogmatica Punishment. You can target a face-up card the opponent controls and bounce it to the hand. That's um, basically better than when Pegasus adding Nister. Uh, three ints for the Punishment. One Garua, same thing. Uh, three copies of Albion. Two copies of the Bastard Dragon. One copy of the Mirror Jade. We're playing two Sanctifier Dragon uh, with the Macaba. Macaba being just, I mean, really a Prosperity or Punishment target, whatever it is you need it for. <clears throat> same goes for the um, Cyber Dragon Nova. Oh, I'm sorry. No, you do... Um, you dump the Cyber Dragon Nova to get out the Macaba. I'm, I'm an idiot. <laughs> We're playing three copies of Solemn Judgment, three Anti Spell, the other uh, D Barrier, one Feather Duster, one Lightning Storm, two Gamma Seal. <laughs> and then we're playing three Sphere Mode Testicles and a giant Egyptian God card in the Wing Dragon of Ra. I love things that are able to play the Wing Dragon of Ra. So, in the event that like you give this to your opponent and they're not able to link off with it and you get this back, you contribute and get out a 4,000 attack Ra. Should you do this in your meta deck? God, no, because the chances of that coming up is pretty much never. Um, like, that is a massive meta read that you got to make. And, like, an OTS championship is a championship at your locals. <coughs> so, clearly, this dude knew, like, hey, everybody's going to be popping off and dropping a dookie on the board and just sitting there and playing with themselves. I got to have this raw. So... Don't, don't do this if you're going to a fucking regional or a YCS. You're going to get your butthole blown out to the venue next door. Uh, don't do not do this. You can play Sphere Mode. Don't play Raw. Like, yeah, some people are messing around with it. It's for locals. Don't take this to a big event. It's not going to work out for you. I, I can assure you that. But it's cool to see regardless, ladies and gentlemen. And especially for like an OTS championship, if you know your local meta, something like this can work. Especially if you know like, hey, people aren't going to be doing anything with this Sphere Mode. And then you just get it back and tribute it, and then you've got your 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 big ass raw. <clears throat> so as I always like to do, let's let's do some test hands here. Boop doop doop. One two three four five. So you've got the branded fusion line. Uh, even if you get ashed, you actually don't care in this deck. You set the compulse. You can go uh, Nadir servant to grab you. I guess like Ecclesia to set the punishment, and like you hope that prosperity can get you more deck thinning and get you to like more trap cards and stuff. Um, yeah, this deck actually doesn't care if the Branded Fusion gets ashed. One, two, three, four, five. Opening up, uh, Decisive Battle is actually not bad because it just protects your back row. Opening up Lightning Storm going first, yeah, that sucks, but you also have the Prosperity, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five, six. So you're guaranteed either playing the Time Tearing or you can get to the, uh, Crackdown of the Branded Fusion. That seems hot. One, two, three, four, five. Uh, this hand's kind of rough, actually. Well, I mean, you got the time tearing for the next turn if you can survive. Uh, you go Ecclesia, and, like, I guess you set the the Dogmatica Punishment, and you hope for the best, or, like, you summon Jalgen and hope for the best. I mean, that that's that's not very good, bro. Like, that, I feel like that can get outed. Especially, too, like, you got to keep in mind that a lot of decks... <coughs> excuse me, I'm still trying to get over my cold. A lot of decks are starting to move away from hand traps, and they're going more to main decking things like Dark Ruler, Dark Hole, Raigeki, and things like that. So, like, if you can't set up, like, like a Jaugen backed up with, like, a Dogmatica Punishment isn't doing a damn thing. Like, yeah, uh, you, you gotta be careful when you play this kind of deck, bro, because, like, if you don't win the die roll, you actually, this deck auto-loses to King Calamity. Yeah, uh, if you play this at a regional, you need to throw something in to beat King Calamity, like Kurokara or something, because this deck auto loses to Calamity. But, guys, let me know what you think down in the comments below. Is there any way that, like, maybe Stun could do something at a regional level one day besides, like, a local championship? But thank you guys for watching, and I will see you in the next video.